Good afternoon and welcome to the spring 22 commencement of the University of Houston Victoria College of Business and College of Education and Health Professions. Just feel free to hoot and holler all afternoon. It's going to be a good day. All right, go ahead. We like to see a little enthusiasm. And speaking of which, we'd ask that you all stand, please, and join us in the singing of the national anthem, which will be led by freshman student Nyla Lee. Please be seated. My name is Bob Glennon. It is my great honor and privilege to be the president of the University of Houston at Victoria. We are here today to participate in a ceremony of celebration that stretches back through the history for at least a thousand years. Since many of you are the first in your family to graduate. How many first-generation students do we have? Would you stand if you're a first-generation student graduating today? Thank you. This is a big day for you, but there are many things about pomp and circumstance that remain a bit of a mystery. So we wanted to start by talking about the reasons that we wear these robes today. In what we refer to as the Dark Ages, starting about 1000 AD, there were no universities and there were no libraries. Additionally, there was a very strict class system. If you were born in a particular station, it was inevitable that you would spend your entire life at that station. In other words, if you were born a peasant or a farmer or a baker or anywhere else along the spectrum, that is where you would spend your life. And part of what kept you in your place was your clothing. What you were wearing was a sure sign of your station in life and what was expected of you. Moving up in the world was an extremely remote possibility. Books were a scarce commodity and consequently so was knowledge. Going in, coming into the possession of knowledge was one of the very few ways a person could move up in a world where there was a strict and rigid caste. If one was able to learn how to read, finding books would be the next obstacle. There were only two places to find books, monasteries and private libraries. But monasteries were the only place where books could be accessed by someone not of noble birth. 
Men who wanted to seek knowledge to better their lot in life came to the monastery to find it. In most cases, these seekers of knowledge were young initiates into the priesthood, called clerics. They were required to join the monastery and wear the clerical robes as as a declaration to the world of the path they had chosen. In doing so, they did more than simply declare their identities. They also took on certain responsibilities to everyone they encountered. To put on the robe was a life-changing event. A person who put on the robe of a cleric was committing himself to serving others. As time progressed, the wearing of robes became increasingly symbolic. As universities developed an identity separate from the monastery, the meaning of the robe changed. The academic robes you see today became associated with teaching. But even in change, the real meaning of the robes remained basically the same. The wearing of the academic robe by our faculty is still an expression of who we are and what purpose we serve in society. It carries with it certain obligations. Concepts like academic integrity and service are an inherent part of accepting a place within the community of scholars. When we wear the regalia, we are still saying to society that we are seekers of knowledge that we are here to serve others as well as ourselves, and that we recognize our obligations to those who are present here today. A thousand years ago, when a cleric put on the robe, he was saying he was a new person, a new member of a new community. When a cleric put on the robe, it changed everything about their life. I believe the faculty members assembled here today in your honor will tell you that their decision to pursue their educational dreams, to don their robes, was also a life-changing event. My hope for each of you is that the education you received here helps you achieve the future that you see for yourself, and that there will come a time, perhaps today, when you would agree putting on the robe changed your life too. But I would remind you that today's ceremony is called commencement and not conclusion. You are not through. You are starting. From this day forward, you are a clear example of what a degree from UHV can do for a person. You are now and forever will be the sons and daughters of UHV, a member of the Jaguar family, an alumnus. Whatever field you have chosen, people will look at you and judge us. When you come up here and get your degree, the last thing I will tell you is now go and do good work. Go out and show the world how a UHV degree can help you open any door that you want to pass through. I want you to know that as you go out today to engage your future and change your world, that UHV is proud of you. But we are looking forward to being prouder still as we watch what you accomplish accomplished in your life, in the lives of your family, in the lives of your community. Do good work and make us prouder. And while we're talking about your community, I want to remind you of something I truly believe every educated person knows. You rarely accomplish anything of real importance and of lasting value alone. Our greatest accomplishments are those we achieve with others, not in spite of others. Olympic sprinter and three-time gold medalist Wilma Rudolph once noted, no matter what accomplishments you have in life, somebody helped you get there. You are here today surrounded by the people who literally and figuratively helped you achieve this distinction. These are your people. They helped you get here today. Think about that, and then before you leave this place today, thank them. An educated person knows the importance of being thankful. Be thankful to your people. Life is waiting for you to experience it. It is indeed a summation of the experience that we have from the moment we take our first breath to the moment we take our last. During the past two years, we have had experiences together that will remain with us for a lifetime. 
In many ways, they have shaped us and they have forced us to make decisions about how we choose to live among each other. Therefore, being thankful, grateful, gracious, compassionate, and understanding are all signs that the knowledge we have obtained is worthy of the responsibility we have to this planet that we share. So my message to you today is both short and simple. Celebrate the joyous occasion. Be proud of what you have accomplished and be hopeful about the path that you have chosen. Let the robe you are wearing be your declaration to the world of who you are and where you are going. Embrace and thank your people. Let this commencement exercise be the start of the next stage of your life. Stand proud that you are part of UHV's Jack, Jack's Nation and show the world what you and UHV can accomplish together. And always remember, go Jacks. We have a number of folks here on the stage that I want to very briefly uh, introduce. We have a number of distinguished representatives of our campus community. We are fortunate to have a dedicated faculty and staff who come to work every day to make life better for our students. Some of those folks work on the President's Cabinet and are seated behind me. So I would ask the members of the President's Cabinet on the platform to please stand and be recognized. I'd also like to acknowledge, on a personal note, the First Lady of UHV, my wife, Laurie, who I appreciate very much as I serve as your president. <laughs> Sitting with Laurie is Colonel Trina Rice, Senior Military Assistant to the Office of the Undersecretary of Defense. Colonel Rice, welcome. <laughs> Students are the lifeblood of a university. But the heart that pumps that blood is the university faculty, some of whom are here today. You've already seen one representative, and that was our Grand Marshal, Dr. Jeffrey Blodgett. <clears throat> Dr. Blodgett is the president of the Faculty Senate and is a professor of marketing in the College of Business. But also sitting here on the platform are the people that I think that you really want to say something to, particularly those of you who are sitting down here, and those are our faculty. So I'm going to ask the faculty to stand so they can hear your acclamation. Would the faculty please stand? <laughs> Students. Now, I would ask you, if you've not already done so, to please silence your phones and other electronic devices. If the phone rings while you're here, don't answer. Unless, of course, it's the good Lord calling, and then you always want to answer, <laughs> particularly here. I'm now going to call to the podium UHV Student Government President, Ms. Tiara Figueroa, who is going to lead you uh, in a brief presentation and moment of silence. Hi, graduates. Let's give yourself a round of applause. Woo! My understanding is that taking a moment to reflect is to help each of us focus on this moment in time to be appreciative of our past, present, and future. It is essential to be present. And the word present is interesting since it has several meanings which we can apply today. A present is a gift. To present is to give something. And to be present is to be here in this moment in time. And to be present is to be fully focused on what you are doing. How many times have you used the word present during the last four years to say, here I am when your name was called on the roll? 
This portion of the ceremony is meant to give you an opportunity to be present now, to be here in this moment and consider all the great accomplishments that you've achieved, to realize who, where you are and consider all of those who are here with you today, who come to hear your name get called and for you to say, I'm here. All the great philosophers and thinkers teach us that enlightenment begins with the significance of purpose and meaning. Plato, Rousseau, Frankel, Kant, and others thought about the importance of being present in some shape, way, and form. So, the challenge is to be present in this moment with eyes and heart wide open. Take this moment for what it is, a goal realized and a gift received. We offer this moment in time for each of you to reflect on why you are here, how you came to be here, and where you may go from here. So please, join me as we take a few seconds to reflect upon our journey up until this point. Now, I'd like to welcome Dan Maxwell, Interim Vice Chair of Student Affairs and Enrollment Services, who will offer our greetings from the UH system. Thank you. Well, hello, graduates. How are you? To our faculty and to our staff and to our family and friends. I'm the Interim Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs and Enrollment Services, Dan Maxwell, and it is my honor to bring greetings on behalf of the entire University of Houston system and to congratulate you on this very special day. The countless hours, late night study, studying sessions, the seamlessly endless assignments have finally paid off. Today, you become a college graduate. Give yourselves a round of applause. And while we celebrate your accomplishment, let us not forget the faculty and staff, and maybe most importantly, your family and friends who have helped you along the way. So let's be sure to thank them. So let's go off script for a minute, folks. Graduates, stand up, find your family and friends, and thank them right now. Let's go. Thank them. All right, graduates, this is the day that you will never forget. It's been many years since I received my degree, but I can tell you it's a day that I still remember. There's nothing like walking across the stage to see the vision that you've long dreamed of becoming a reality. I can also tell you that my degree has served me well, and I know that yours will take you to greater levels. I've been fortunate to having a rewarding and successful career, and it all started with my college education. Although the world has changed dramatically over the years, those core principles that I learned in my college courses have been applicable throughout the various stages of my professional life, and along with hard work, they have been key to my success. I am confident that you will find the same value in your degree, and I know that if you apply what you've learned here, and with a strong ethic, you will be the leaders in your field and the leaders that we need. Your knowledge you've gained here at the University of Houston, Victoria has prepared you for the rigors of a professional, for the professional world. It's equipped you to tackle corporate challenges, to think creatively, to launch your own businesses, and to be at the service of others. Whatever career path you take, your University of Houston, Victoria degree has readied you for the road ahead. You have a lot to be proud of here at, as a UHV graduate. You've worked long and hard to gain the skills and knowledge and attributes that you need to soar in your profession and bring value to society and your community. The work that you did here matters, not only for yourself, but also for the future generations. UHV is an integral part of this community, and its continued growth has a lasting impact on the region. And now, each of you will go out and contribute to that impact. And so it is my pleasure and honor to congratulate you and you informally welcome you as an alumni of the University of Houston, Victoria. I know you will succeed because you've already done so. So on behalf of the University of Houston system, congratulations, best wishes to all your future endeavors, and go Jags.
And now I'd like to welcome today's commencement speaker, the Honorable Gilbert Cisnero, who is the Under Secretary of Defense for Personnel and Readiness. He was sworn into his position on August 24, 2021, and serves as the Principal Staff Assistant and Advisor to the Secretary of Defense for Force Readiness, Force Management, Health Affairs, National Guard and Reserve Component Affairs, education and training, and military and civilian personnel requirements and management, including equal opportunity, morale, welfare, recreation, and quality of life matters. He is a native of Southern California, as well as a former officer in the U.S. Navy. He's a philanthropist, a veterans advocate, and member of Congress with national security experience. As you can see in your programs, he has had a long, proud career of service through the U.S. through promoting legislation as well as creating scholarships, advocating for important changes, and supporting education initiatives and nonprofit organizations. He has been a strong supporter of the U.S. military service members and veterans, and he founded the Cisnero Hispanic Leadership Institute at his alma mater, the George Washington University, which not only provides scholarships for Latino students, but is also becoming a leading institute for policy initiatives that affect the Latino community. So please join me in welcoming the Honorable Gilbert Cisneros. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you, uh, President Glenn, for that kind introduction. Uh, I'm delighted to have received this special invitation to join you here today. Uh, to the parents, grandparents, parental guardians, siblings, children, extended family and friends, and to the leadership, faculty, and staff of the University of Houston, Victoria, I want to express my congratulations for your contributions and support during this journey. But most of all, I want to offer my congratulations to the graduating class of 2022. Please give yourself a round of applause. A lot of you may be wondering, who am I? What does the Secretary of Defense for Personnel and Readiness have to do with UHV? Well, I'm not just the Undersecretary. My life has been defined by many of the same values as those of you in this room. The value of service, giving back to others, the importance of hard work to, to get ahead, and above all, the life-changing and transformation power of education. So when I was invited to speak to you all here today, I knew I couldn't pass up this opportunity to celebrate with all of you this immense achievement you've made. I grew up in Southern California, come from a long line of veterans, both my grandfather served during World War II, my godfather served during the Korean War, my, my father and uncle served during the Vietnam War. But my family didn't have a lot of education. In fact, on my mother's side, a lot of my family didn't even graduate from high school. But I learned something from them, very important lessons. I knew I wanted to do something, get something more out of my life, but I just wasn't sure how to go about it. So not really knowing what I wanted to do, I decided to join the U.S. Navy. Five days after high school, I left for boot camp. And I'm not going to lie, five days in, I was wondering if I made the right decision. But fortunately for me, I met a chief petty officer who saw something in me that I didn't see in myself yet. He suggested I apply for this program called the Broaden Opportunity for Officer Selection and Training or BOOST program. It was the Navy's affirmative action program that they had at the time. The BOOST program was designed to take students from underserved communities and help prepare them academically for college. After successfully completing the BOOST program, I received a Navy ROTC scholarship and attended the George Washington University. But getting through BOOST was no cakewalk. It was a lot of late night studying and hard work that continued throughout college and I am sure a lot of you have had that same experience. The phrase, life is full of opportunities, is rather cliche, but it's, it's very true. 
I was presented with an opportunity to attend a program that was going to make, a, make me a better student, and it changed my life. In the span of five years, I went from an 18-year-old kid who did, wasn't really sure what he was going to do with his life to someone who had become the first in his family to graduate from college and earned his commission as a United States Naval officer. And none of this would have happened if it wasn't for one individual making a simple suggestion that I should apply for a program that would help provide me with an opportunity. And I'm forever grateful to the United States Navy for the opportunity that it provided me. All of my education, which includes a bachelor's degree, an MBA, and another master's degree in urban education policy, is, is because of my military service. I had the opportunity to travel the world, but most importantly, I learned how to interact with a diverse group of, of people, and I learned how to become a leader. When it was time for me to leave, I felt I was well prepared for any challenge that would arise. Your hard work and dedication got you to this point today, and you're about to graduate, and you have capitalized on opportunities that have been presented to you. But I'll say, sometimes it's just better to be lucky. And 12 years ago, I was really lucky. I won the Mega Millions lottery thanks to a random stop for dinner at a Hawaiian barbecue spot in my hometown. Like many people, my wife and I had this conversation. You know, what would we do if we ever won the lottery? My dream was to create an organization where we can give kids like me the same opportunity to change their life through education. So that's what we did. My wife and I started the Gilbert and Jackie Cisneros Foundation, and over the last 12 years, we have supported college access programs and scholarships and underserved communities. We founded the Cisneros Hispanic Leadership Institute at my alma mater, as well as the Caminos Al Futuro program that sends high school kids to D.C., giving them the, the opportunity to live on a college campus, and we encourage them to challenge themselves and get out of their comfort zones. It was my philanthropic drive and the desire to serve my community that led to my next career in politics. I had the immense honor of representing California's 39th Congressional District in the House of Representatives, in addition to helping individual constitu constituents access federal benefits, I, ha I have their voice heard in Washington. I also had the honor of representing my fellow veterans on the Veterans Affairs Committee, my former service member colleagues on the Armed Services Committee, and the Latinos nationwide sitting as a member of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus. Today I serve as the Under Secretary of Defense for Personnel and Readiness, and I am so immensely proud to be a part of the most diverse administration in our nation's history. As Undersecretary, I oversee all kinds of personnel policies and, op op and operations from compensation and training programs to grocery store and schools on the military installations to housing and ch child care programs. Most near and dear to my heart, though, I oversee the department's diversity initiatives, serving as the department's defense chief diversity and inclusion officer. We're undertaking a massive effort on a scale not seen before to increase diverse representation at every level of service to help, help us become the most intelligent, capable, and effective fighting force that we can be. We're making sure everyone has an equal opportunity to su succeed, whether they're in our military or part of our civilian workforce. As I mentioned earlier, I was the first in my family to graduate from college, so I know President Glenn already did this, but I'm going to do it again. So I want to take this opportunity to recognize all our first-generation college students. So I know how hard it is to be the first, the feeling of, of imposter syndrome, the unique pressure to succeed. But you did it. You succeeded. Your accomplishment here today is generationally transformative for your families. Because of your accomplishment here today, your siblings, your children, nieces and nephews and most are most likely to follow in your footsteps and even surpass you. If you're, so if you're the first in your family to graduate, please stand up so we can give you a round of applause. For many of you that are graduating today, this has been a long, hard journey. Many of you worked full-time and raised a family while taking a full class load, struggling to find the time to study 
between the shopping and making dinner, getting off a of fool's day's work and heading straight to class. This type of dedication does not go unnoticed. It may have taken you longer to get here than you might have hoped, but the important thing is that you persisted. You didn't give up, and when things got tough and you wondered how you were going to, to keep doing this, you dug deep down inside yourself and you found a way to keep going. So if you worked and raised a family while, while earning your degree, please stand up so we can recognize your special achievement. If there's one thing I want you to take away from, your, from my life story as you embark on a new chapter in yours, it's this. Give back as much as you can. I have a picture hanging on the office, on my office wall in the Pentagon of Jackie Robinson, one of my favorite baseball players. And it has the quote, a life is not important except in the impact it has on other lives. I have tried to live my life by this quote, and I challenge you to do the same. No one gets through life alone. We all need help and support along the way. You all have a teacher, a mentor, family member, a friend, who helped you reach your potential in some big or small way. I challenge you to make an impact on the world one life at a time by supporting others as someone has supported you. If you're still figuring out what's next for you, think about public service. Whether it's local, state, or federal, there is no better way to help people and make a difference. My time in the military Congress and now the federal government has been immensely impactful and enriching with opportunities to grow my own skills and continue my education every day. I've been able to make a real impact on lives directly and indirectly, and I've seen firsthand how important it is for Latinos like me to have a seat at the table to represent our community. Now more than ever, our country needs motivated, dedicated, and passionate public servants to help our nation thrive. But even if public service isn't for you, that doesn't let you off the hook to pay it forward. Mentor an up-and-coming student. Volunteer in your community. Share your story on how education has made a difference to inspire the next generation. Think about how you are going to impact other people just as those in your life have uplifted you. So no matter what field you're getting into, get out there and make a difference. Now more than ever, that's what we need. You're leaving this institution with an education and a degree, and I know you are ready to take on the world, so have at it. Never give up on your dreams. Never give up on yourself. Never give up on doing what's right. So congratulations, graduates. Thank you very much. Secretary Cisneros, I'd like to present you with a small token of our appreciation. This is a, a very expensive envelope, and inside it contains information about a, a brick that will be permanently installed in front of UHV Center Hall, commemorating your appearance today as our commencement speaker. Thank, Thank you, you, you for all you've done. Thank you. Thank you. And now, if you will, please welcome to the podium the Chief Academic Officer of the University, the Provost Charles M. Chance M. Glenn, who will take us into the next portion of our ceremony. Thank you, President Glenn, and thank you, Secretary Cisneros, for those inspiring words to our graduates this afternoon. I would first like to uh, direct your attention to page eight in your program to view the list of those faculty recognized by their students and peers for excellence in teaching, research, and service. They should be commended along with the other faculty award winners for their work and the difference that they make at the university and in our students' lives. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> UHV definitely has outstanding students. Would you agree? <laughs> the 
But those graduating with honors have shown special dedication to their studies. These undergraduate candidates are wearing gold braids over their robes, and their names are listed in your program. Now, I'm pleased to recognize them today. Candidates graduating cum laude with honor have a grade point average of 3.5 to 3.67 on a four-point scale. Would those graduating cum laude please stand and be recognized at this time? Congratulations. Please be seated. Those undergraduates graduating magna cum laude with high honor have GPAs of 3.68 to 3.84. Please stand so we may recognize you at this time. Congratulations. Be seated. Finally, those graduating summa cum laude with highest honor have a 3.85 GPA or higher. Congratulations on this outstanding achievement. Please stand so that we may honor you at this time. Stand proudly. Congratulations. Please be seated. Next, I would call your attention to student members of academic honor societies and the UHV honors program. These students are wearing cords or stoles to indicate membership in these societies, which are listed in page seven of your program. Graduates of the honors program completed an extensive curriculum supplementing their normal academic work while maintaining a high GPA. They're wearing gold medallions designating their achievements. Would all of the student members of these honor societies and the honors program please stand and be recognized. Please be seated. You may also have noticed graduates wearing red, white, and blue intertwined graduation cords. We call these our Patriot Cords. These individuals are wearing the Patriot Cord because they are veterans and active service members of the United States Armed Forces. At this time, we ask that all graduating veterans and active service members, as well as any others in the building, please stand and be recognized at this time. UHV thanks and salutes you for your service to our country. Thank you and please be seated. We also have with us graduating international students who are proudly wearing a sash representing their countries of citizenship. International students are those enrolled at UHV on an F and J visa status. And we are honored to have them with us as graduates. Please stand and be recognized at this time. Please be seated. In addition, we have some special graduates who are wearing Jaguar Spirit Cords. These generous students are participating in our Jags Give Back program, and we appreciate their support of UHV. Please stand and be recognized if you are one of these students. Thank you. Please be seated. We thank you for your generosity and leadership towards this university. Now, if you notice st students with teal cords, those are our first-gen graduation cords, which denote students who are the first generation in their family to complete a four-year degree. 
I know we've recognized that a number of times today, but we're going to do it again. So please join me in honoring these students who chose to take a new step and change their future by earning a degree here at UHV. We're very proud of you. I, too, was a first-generation student of my family. Finally, I'd like to recognize the outstanding students for spring 2022 selected by the College of Business and the College of Education and Health Professions. These students were chosen based on their academic records and related achievements. If the following students are here, would you please stand as I call your names and remain standing as we recognize all of the students. This semester's outstanding student for the College of Business were Meredith Bridges, the outstanding graduate student, and Salvador Francis Palmer, out, Palma, outstanding undergraduate student. The outstanding students for the College of Education and Health Professions were Elizabeth De La Garza, outstanding graduate student, and Jensen Schindler, outstanding undergraduate student. Congratulations to all of you on your outstanding work. And now the candidates for degrees will be presented. Candidates for the College of Business will be presented by the college's dean, Dr. Ken Caldwell. Candidates for the College of Education and Health Professions will be presented by the interim dean, Dr. Rachel Martinez. Dr. Caldwell. Will the candidates for Bachelor of Business Administration, Master of Accountancy, Master of Business Administration, and Master of Science degrees please rise? This should be all business students. On behalf of the faculty, I present these candidates as having fulfilled the requirements for the designated degrees and recommend that the appropriate degrees be conferred. Please be seated. Dr. Martinez. <laughs> All right. Will the candidates for Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Science in Interdisciplinary Studies, Master of Education, and Master of Science degrees, please rise. <laughs> On behalf of the faculty, I present these candidates as having fulfilled the requirements for the designated degrees and recommend that the appropriate degrees be conferred. Please remain standing and would all graduates please rise as well. Will the faculty and platform party please rise? President Glenn, it is my distinct honor to present these degree candidates who are students in good standing with the University of Houston, Victoria, and have completed all the requirements for their respective degrees as set forth by the faculty of the university. I recommend that those degrees be conferred. Earlier in this ceremony, we talked about being present. Do you remember? About being fully focused, being here, being aware of what is going on around you. And we do that so that when we get to this particular point, you'll be fully aware, fully focused on what is about to happen because this represents the culmination of all your work, 
all your effort, all your sacrifice, and all the effort and sacrifice of your people, your family, that has brought you here to this moment. So be present. By the authority vested in me by the state of Texas, and on behalf of the faculty of the College of Business and the College of Education and Health Professions, I now confer upon each of you and upon those graduating in absentia your respective degrees with all the rights, honors, and privileges thereunto appertaining. Ladies and gentlemen, the graduating class of the University of Houston, Victoria. Thank you. Please be seated. We now need to give you just a little bit of instruction. Graduates, in just a moment, the provost is going to come and give you some more specific instruction. The crux of it is you're going to walk over here. You're going to give a card. Your name's going to be called. You're going to come over here. You have to shake my hand. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you really don't want to shake my hand, I'll understand. Just hold your degree with both hands, and then we'll smile. There'll be a very nice man taking pictures. Then you're going to walk over there and get some more pictures made. Now then, audience members, you are certainly welcome to take pictures from where you are. We would ask that you not come down amongst the graduate as it will disrupt the flow of the ceremony. But there's something serious that we need to talk about because I've been now to over 150 commencement exercises. And it's been my overwhelming experience that at some point in time, a graduate's going to give his card to the reader, and then some low, scurrilous family member sitting in the audience is going to do his or her best to embarrass that graduate by shouting, hooping, hollering, clapping, doing all kinds of unseemly things. So sad, so very sad. <laughs> so let's just be as clear as we possibly can. Go right ahead. <laughs> today is a day of great celebration. It's a day to be happy. It's a day to celebrate and be loud. So when your graduate's name is called, you make all the noise you want to. But now, once they shake my hand and start walking away, hush up. <laughs> because it will be somebody else's turn then to have their moment at center stage. And I know that you would not want anyone to shout over that. So again, graduates, congratulations. I look forward to shaking your hand here or at least standing next to you while we have our picture taken in just a minute. And now please welcome the Chief Academic Officer of the Provost, Dr. Chance Glenn, to give you a few final instructions. All right, graduates, as you're preparing, and we're preparing to receive you here, uh, as the President said, first of all, faculty marshals are going to guide you to my left to pick up uh, your diploma covers. You would walk to and meet the president here. If you wish to shake a hand, extend a hand. If you do not, we will not be offended by that. We do know what we're living under, uh, but please do if you wish to do that. Hold your diploma cover straight and in the right orientation and smile for your picture with the president. Uh, myself and the dean of the college will be standing there as well. If you wish to shake our hands, you may do so also. Extend your hand. If you do not, again, we will not be offended. Um, and so you may then exit to your right, to our right, and there you will take pictures, additional pictures. We got all of that? And let's enjoy ourselves. Let's proceed.
It is now my privilege to announce the names of those receiving their bachelor's degree from the College of Business. Erica Weissman. Veronica Camacho Mayers. Ludan Raymond, cum laude. Jordan Priestmeyer. Philip Luciano. Dare Nicole Gomez, summa cum laude. <laughs> Kaylee Brianne Osuna. Maria Isabel Porter. Jamie Claire Williams. Caitlin Marie Poppy Cum Laude. Kaylee Nicole Priest. Maya Abbas. Alexandra Renee Hernandez. Francisco J. Zanon II. Ricardo Gonzalez, magna cum laude. Brittany Laurent Franklin, cum laude. Giselle Gabriela Hernandez, summa cum laude. Joe Marie Fragasso. Erica De Leon. Amy Barriel Wood. Robert L. Radford, cum laude. <laughs> Michelle Viene Shavara Rodriguez, summa cum laude. <laughs> Guinevar L. Dykes, cum laude.
Rachel Salis Williamson. Betsy America Sanchez. Loretta Miranda Ramirez, summa cum laude. Marlene Perdon. Edward Jacob Rivas Cum Laude. Stephanie A. Bueno. Mercy Karina Escobar, Summa Cum Laude. Edwin Lionel Alvarez. Kayla Shillib. Logan Everett Creech. Jennifer Celeste Say Summa Cum Laude. Joel Habo Magna Cum Laude. Devin Alexandria Puentes. Sarika Kilnani, magna cum laude. Dante Harris. Fakata Abebe Volde, cum laude. Amber Marissa Molina. Caitlin Renee Blyer. Brad Edward Henry. Nicole Parento. Dingwing Hong, cum laude. Krista Warnock. Brooke Michelle Testerman. Alexandra Catalina Dukakis.
Christina Burr Cum Laude. Brenda Luna. Anthony Thomas Serrano Cum Laude. Victor Mesa Cum Laude. Elizabeth Fonseca. <laughs> Dustin Orlando Canales. <laughs> Navjot Carr, summa cum laude. Christopher Michael Mitchell, summa cum laude. <laughs> Nathan Nicholas Eric, cum laude. Madison M. Benavides, magna cum laude. Jordan Zach. Fang Lee, summa cum laude. Hanson Trong Lei, summa cum laude. Ang Trong No, cum laude. Vanessa Bazan Cum Laude. Matthew Aaron Jalufka Cum Laude. Ty Williams Magna Cum Laude. Charles D. Chavez. Araceli Ramirez Garcia, cum laude. Montserrat Ramirez. Roberto Muñiz. Brandon Perez Laredo. Fagna Sampaio Cum Laude. James Harold Turnbull.
Corrine Dan Townsend. Naomi Ikine, cum laude. Alexis Olivia Cruz, magna cum laude. Rachel Marie Dillingham. Muhammad Saeed. Aisha Raji. Emily Janine McNair, cum laude. Muhammad Hussan. <laughs> Valerie Jacqueline Martinez. <laughs> Kathleen Sue Summa Cum Laude. Hathan Habas Halim, magna cum laude. <laughs> Taylor Fitch. <laughs> Jessica Vo Trong, magna cum laude. Lily Wu, cum laude. Hope Lynn Wilms. I am now pleased to announce the names of those receiving their master's degrees from the College of Business. Cameron Bledsoe. <laughs> Adriana Ray Cruz. J. Manson. <laughs> Kayla Witty Thompson. <laughs> Epec Kos. Michael Gallops. <laughs> Meredith Elise Bridges, Outstanding Student. <laughs> Tiffany Nicole Tota. Jeffrey Dean Nash, Jr. <laughs> Brittany Michelle Washington. Oh, 
Stephanie Lachey Gibson. Brian Anthony Hernandez. Kimberly Ann Davis. Kayleen Sakya. Lester Jose Hernandez Ortiz. Dale Yumbau. Jasmine Shantae Young. Elizabeth Fennell Thomas. Khalid Azim. Anish Patel. <laughs> Jesus Benavides. <laughs> Jennifer Page Ferris. Ruby Mazuka. <laughs> Ariz Beth Harvey. <laughs> Mohammed Rizivi. Blessings, precious Daniel. Dana Michelle Walker. Trevor Butler. Rihanna Loris Cardenas. Brigitte Nguyen. <laughs> Nikki Taylor North. Dia Grahanam. Kevin James Zinter. Kimba S. Green. Twin Lee. Yeah. Yeah. 
Juan Manuel Hernandez. Danishi Kalei. Tiffany Trom Tran. Tikora Polk. Selena Cruz. Denise De La Garza. Luz E. Gisais. Edith Okazam. Kara Holland. Nicholas Robert Armstrong. Lori Martinez. Jasmine Collins. Umer Mazur. Kaylee Janice Sanders. David Lawrence Green, Jr. Tosin Fasidi. Diana Pardon Villarreal. Kimberly LaShawn Bowens. <laughs> Helen Ivana Martinez. <laughs> Gina Muhammad Awad. Enrique Renee Miles. <laughs> Rosie McCusker. Rahil Hemerani. <laughs> Farouk Bashir. <laughs> Fatumata Ba.
Maria Concepcion Castano. Abraham Calapo. Kofo Fallowin. Isaac Mignols. Oh. Eric Floatstroms. Crystal Larada. Selena Clarissa de la Pina. Cartisha Leanne Jones. Tara Michelle Davis. Monet Lacey Elizabeth Nicole Walton Jasmine Vidal Denisha Tyler. Jasmine S. Woodard. Adol Hamani. Ruth Marion Ye. Ajira Maddox. Jessica Arleano. This concludes the graduates of the College of Business. It is now my privilege to read the names of those receiving bachelor's degrees from the College of Education and Health Professions. Sanjad Jaludov. Oh, I'll say it again. Sunat Jaludov. Angelica Celeste Valenzuela. Kit Vu. <laughs> Crystal Lee Yount, magna cum laude. <laughs> 
Shelby Nicole Ayala, UHV employee. Leticia Madrano. Estefane Flores Quintero. Sabrina Nicole Zapata, cum laude. Regina Beatrice Smith. Amy Elizabeth Spalik, summa cum laude. Carmen Miranda Gallegos Leos. Lindsay R. Falcon. <laughs> Linabeth Marie Corpus. <laughs> Angel Marie Bohach. Megan Elizabeth Wood. <laughs> Valerie Julissa Rodriguez, magna cum laude. <laughs> Alexis Brooke Wiener. Dalton Lane Service. <laughs> Chloe Lauren, Lauren Rodriguez. <laughs> Michaela Marshery Hare. Rashana Rose Davis. <laughs> Jessica Lian Din, cum laude. <laughs> Carrie Lindley. Caitlin Nicole Tynes, cum laude. Kobe Brett Bynum. Hannah Colleen Schultz, summa cum laude. Gabrielle Maria Rebo, magna cum laude. Jacqueline Renee Clark. Yes. 
Jennifer Elisa Cruz, magna cum laude. Paige Nicole Mickish, magna cum laude. Kendall Faith Bradley. Austin Aguirre, cum laude. Marcy Lynn Payne. Christina Alyssa Cataldo, magna cum laude. Gabrielle M. Cretton. Ferdos Izat Nasser. <laughs> Natalie Lucio. <laughs> Abigail Irene Gonzalez, cum laude. Jessica Nicole Musi. <laughs> Emily Michelle Martinez. <laughs> Ashley Renee Norwood Barbera, magna cum laude. Erica Melissa Razo, sumo cum laude. Lizbeth Delgado. Jensen Nicole Schindler, magna cum laude, outstanding student. Adriana Michelle Adams, cum laude. Lacey Jean Robbins, summa cum laude. Dulce Estefiana Wait, cum laude. Christy E. McTee. Adila Cruz Avila. <laughs> Chelsea Joe Huber. Corbin Michael Henry. Lauren Elizabeth Green Becker, magna cum laude. Yeah. 
Nate Edison. Shade Akinrafe, magna cum laude. I'm now pleased to announce the names of those receiving master's degrees from the College of Education and Health Professions. Lerma Mirero Parker. Amanda Lynn Sutton. <laughs> Haley Elizabeth Marek. <laughs> Catherine Tirio. Jennifer Denae Heinrich Kite. <laughs> Haiti Martinez. <laughs> Caitlin C. May. Gina Calvillo. Shonda Renee McLean. Gabby Lauren Garza. Candice Quebecca. Jacqueline Denise Longoria. Lashonda Shanae Francis. Patricia Louise Yurek. <laughs> Jamie Collier. <laughs> Timothy Manuel Serrano. Carl Mark Frisch. <laughs> Anastasia Chantel Vincent. <laughs> Jasmine V. Bookman. Catherine Brittany Burke. Erica Marina Nunez.
Angela Zamudio Rios. Alisa K. Dupich. Monica M. Stiles. Deepa Anand. Nishay Holub. Victoria. I'll say it one last time. Go and do good work. You didn't go to this much trouble to rest on your laurels. You came here to create a pathway to a life you see for yourself. We want you to achieve that. We're excited for you. We're proud of what you've done. But again, you are the proof in the pudding. You are the example of what can be done when a student comes here. So we expect to be prouder yet and prouder still. So do good work. It's obvious there's a lot of pride in this room. I'd remind you that you should not leave here today without putting your arms around someone's neck and saying thank you. And if I find out you haven't, I will come, I will find you, I'll take your degree back. (laughs) A computer can lose a record, you'd be surprised how easy it is. (laughs) So don't leave here today without thanking your people. At this point in our ceremony, it is customary and appropriate for bachelor's recipients to move the tassel on their mortarboard from the right to the left. If you are wearing a UHV class ring, you may also turn the ring so that the seal faces away from you. Congratulations again to all of our degree recipients and welcome to the company of educated persons. It is now our pleasure to induct this graduated class into the alumni of the University of Houston, Victoria, now more than 22,000 strong. I would like to invite the Honorable Constance Philly Johnson, a UHV alum and criminal district attorney for Victoria County, to induct the spring 2022 graduating class. Ms. Johnson earned a Bachelor of Science in Interdisciplinary Studies in 1993 from UHV. Good afternoon. You are the representatives in your chosen fields and in your communities. The strength of the alumni and the university depends on the strengths of all of you, of all of us. The university will be your gateway to fuller, more meaningful lives. The alumni join you in your pledge of service to that end as alumni together. You may continue to grow in service to our great university, to your community, and to our nation. I congratulate you, class of 2022.
And now I would ask the audience member and the graduates to stand and turn to page nine in your program or watch the screens above. We've talked about traditions. We're about to engage in another tradition, which is the singing of the alma mater, university song. Now, I know our graduates all know it by heart. I will be watching to make sure your lips are moving. But for those of you who don't know the words, again, page nine, or they will appear on the screen uh, above and behind me. The music was recorded for UHV by the Crossroads Community Bank, a band based in Victoria. The song, uh, Alma Mater will be led by Nyla Lee, who sang the national anthem. And once the Alma Mater is finished, please remain standing for the benediction. like to leave you with a Franciscan benediction. It is one that I think is most fitting for a commencement. May God bless you with discomforted easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer pain, rejection, hunger, and war, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and to turn their pain into joy. And may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in the world, so that you can do what others claim cannot be done, to bring justice and kindness to all of our children and the poor. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. As you might well imagine, it takes an awful lot of people to put on a commencement. And there are a lot of people that you've passed wearing staff badges, and working here, coming in on their weekend to be able to make this ceremony possible for you. We've worked long and hard to organize this event. So I'd like to thank Nash Nancy Gresham and all of the many volunteers she coordinates to make this possible. Can we have a round of applause for all of our volunteers who have been here today? Let me also say to our graduates how proud we are of your accomplishments. Many of you have overcome numerous challenges to reach this day, and we salute you. I thank all of you for joining us at the commencement ceremony of the University of Houston, Victoria. I would ask that you remain seated during the recessional of the President's party and graduates. Thank you, and graduates, once again, do good work.